Hey, Cindy Allen, and we're back here with Mia Siegel. This is really our third interview with Mia, which is such a delight. And you, of course, are in the Move Better, Feel Better Feldenkrais Awareness Summit. And just as um, a little reminder, in case you didn't watch the other two interviews, Mia was uh, Moshe Feldenkrais's first official student and practitioner that he trained. She's been practicing his work now for 70-ish years. And uh, I think we're going we're gonna to dive in today really on that topic of why 70 years? What, what would possess somebody to keep going for 70 years in the same work? So welcome, Mia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cynthia. And uh, yeah, I'm, I myself was thinking it, why 70 years? And then I'm thinking, I was thinking, okay, I've taught many seminars in, with Moshe together, I taught a few, and then by myself, quite a big number. And uh, all my students, I don't know, they're spread everywhere. That work is everywhere, and I can see people doing it everywhere. And, and it's amazing how it's spread, actually. It so, is. Uh, Fine, now I'm going to sit on my glory and, and relax. And then I thought, no, actually, there is some things that I think in retrospect, I can see them so much clearer. And they are actually the, how do you call the, the basic, the foundations, the foundation things that, that the whole thing is built on. I mean, and then that goes forever. So now I'd like, I like, and I do teach people who already know the other, the, the other thing. They know the ATM, the FI, everything they do. So what is it that I can add to it? And then I looked at my life and I thought, you know what? I'd like to add to it the foundation and the beginning. Because when I first met him and we made contact and it, I never expected it to be 70 years, right? I th probably thought it will be something, I didn't think, let's say like this, but I thought I can teach some things. And today when I look, it was in those foundation years before we started traveling and before we had plans and, and publicity, the publicity did, I'll tell you what I think, I think it changed everything. But when it was no publicity, what was it? What made somebody like me, and as you see my daughter and my son and my family, what attracted us? The, so, and then I thought it was actually the freedom and the no attraction and no program and the spirit of the way we did it. Today they talk about uh, uh, one step at a time or how do you call it? Uh, mind, mind. Uh, ah, you're talking about mindfulness. mindfulness. There you are. He started mindfulness long before it had a name. That's why I forgot it. <laughs> so, and the thing happened organically. And when he, when it was found out that we are not making a big, it's not going to happen what he wanted, a big establishment in Israel that it will go into the educational system, which is the reason he came to talk to me. When we found out this is not going to happen, we just continued. Why? And I looked at the way we continued and how it attracted itself. Because it started like a friendship, a pleasure. Everything was a pleasure. So let's say he came and he met the family and he liked them. He did things with my children and he liked it. He... Uh, he was dying to express what he's doing, really, bring it out. 
And here he had an, a wonderful audience. He was a wonderful storyteller. And when he'll stand there in the room, I mean, he filled up the room. His stories, everybody listened to. It could be my parents, it could be our friends, it could be our neighbors. He had to tell what he had to tell. So in this spirit, there was always laughter. There was always joy. There was always excitement because it just happened. It was suitable to speak about this at that moment. And when Leora says she remembers what we spoke last night, they, they had homework to do. So he said, oh, mathematics? I'll, I'll help you with this. And they actually learned mathematics from, the, from him. He taught them how to ask questions, how to look at the, at the problems, how to start, uh, how to approach them. He taught them how to not take things for granted. He taught them how not to be afraid of asking questions, talking about not understanding. You know, All this Mia, when you, you say that, one of the things that I feel like the method is, is somewhat good at, or, or if people allow it to affect the rest of their life, which I find it hard not to affect the rest of my life, is critical thinking. And, and as you're talking, I think about like the, the questioning process that you're talking about, that um, we, don't, we just don't accept things at face value. There's a lot of uh, different angles that we're trying to look at and understand through this process of questioning. It seems like to me, it has such major ramifications for life. It is, it is. and that's what is guiding me until today. And that is what he brought in without, is what saying, look, I'm going to give you ways of analyzing. He didn't, he just said, there's a question. What do you think? How do you approach it? And he put them in situations through doing homework. Leon would come home and say, the way the problem in, in uh, geometry, I didn't know what to do. That will spend a week or so with Moshe going into it. Or Leora would come and, and they had another problem in her mathematics also. She, she can tell you and she talks to you, but uh, how to approach many things. And then there was the wisdom of showing them the connections with the body, with awareness. Not just the word that's there with mathematics, but how how does it connect to them? Is anything connecting to you, to your thinking, to what you're doing? And if let's say Leon came with some questions about basketball, he he will show Leon and his friends a way to to the basketball. He couldn't be such a good thrower of basketball like Leon's friends or all this basketball team but he will show them the connection to the body and to the thinking so it was like launching into people self-monitoring which is really the foundation of our work mm -hmm. and this he did it could be during lunchtime talking about i don't know roast beef or something <laughs> but suddenly you'll see into it coming situations that connect awareness with uh, uh, self-monitoring and questioning, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think is the secret of why I could stick to it so many years. And when let's say, and then he never end, stopped, you know, because afterwards, Anything that was new, he, uh, he, he intrigued, he brought up the curiosity. So there was at that time a woman who was teaching exercises for eyes. A German little woman, wonderful lady. And we said, okay, 
let's go to her. She lived outside Tel Aviv somewhere. We went to her. She was a student of ours, a woman who came from Germany, ran away from Germany, and she settled in Israel. And we went to her and we did eye exercises before anybody even spoke about it. Afterwards, it was, it was becoming popular. And for instance, uh, always the curiosity, always the curiosity. So let's say he'll find that it's good time for Leora, let's say, know about movement. So he started one day you come home and he does judo spins and rolls around the whole uh, lawn, <laughs> between the lawn and the, and the plants. And then it, she says, ah, how, how does he do it? And, and Leon comes and says, oh, that's interesting. Just to intrigue curiosities. And next day by chance, he'll bring a book by somebody from the Far East and he'll connect it to Buddhism somehow, to the philosophy. So always there was something that he found new. Like for, you know that when I went to to Japan, he kept corresponding with me. He was teaching all the other Israelis because he said, you're going to Japan, I'm going to get another group. So he was teaching Gavi, Yohanan, Ga mm -hmm. Hava, uh, the, uh, another 11 people, I think. And he wrote to me every time what was happening with them. And that was exciting because I could see how he was thinking and how they interacted with it and what it made him do. But it was not a program. That's the thing. It was free and it came spontaneously, inspired by, I don't know what, but by his real feelings. Yeah. It, it's it's such a different way. way. It's a, such a different it, it's, way it's of it's teaching not, and exploring, isn't it? Uh, and how do you teach it? You can only, I think, teach it by example. I don't know. But we had the example. And for instance, when I went to Japan, he's, he was then maybe 70. And he started learning singing because he said I could never sing. I, I always thought I was unmusical and I couldn't do it. So he went and learned singing. He started singing at the age of 70. He started swimming. He said, you were always going swimming. Now I'm going to go swimming. So he started swimming. And all these ways of teaching, that is why I'm teaching now. That is what I think is, is not, he, he never gave it directly like this, like he did it with my family, that he really, <clears throat> that's what he did all the time. Mm -hmm. And some stories. So stories are important. And he told the millions of stories. You know, when I think about what I little I've known about Moshe, I have to say a part of me would not have have projected that he would be a delightful student to have. But as you're talking now, I'm thinking, who wouldn't want that as a student in any work? Because the person comes ready to really learn and explore. So maybe he was a delightful student to have. Fantastic. And it was his, his, uh, showing us the way he, like he connects with them. If, if he had the children, my children at home, and he saw something is interesting them, he was with them there. Mm -hmm. you, what, you're interested in painting? Let, what's painting? Let's see. And that's, that's how he did. And that's what I do now when I teach with my, uh, all people who teach Feldenkrais. And I, I accentuate at the, how exciting it is to see somebody's body detach a little bit from the floor. Where does it detach? Because why? Why does it stop there? All the curiosity that was the, the basic of all this and all the situation that we were, that were giving to us just by circumstances. Mm -hmm. and things that like you'd say oh it's his crazy habits like if uh, his car broke and, and we always laugh at how he needed an extra part 
and you couldn't get it in Israel. You couldn't import it, nobody had it. So he took a yogurt cup and he, and he put on, on, on the, instead of a light. <laughs> nobody else will do it, but Moshe did it. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Or for instance, Leon remembered yesterday how uh, he saw a, a chain under the seat in Moshe's car. And he said, what's this? And then Leon had a whole lesson about what you can do with the chain. And why does he have it in the car? I mean, anything, you, you show him this and, and he'll show you. So this sort of thing I want to add to all those who now finish Feldenkrais and they do it beautifully and they pass it on beautifully. But that spirit, and there was a lot of laughter also. Like for instance, I had, I had many parties in my house and then he'd come. And do you know the little matchboxes that used to be once? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you take a match and you do like this on the box. Yep, on so, the box. Everybody is dancing happily and eating whatever it is happily. Suddenly Moshe walks in and he takes a box of matches and he holds it in one in the hand like this. And with the thumb, he takes out one match and he goes, and the match flies with fire all over the room and no dancing, no anything. Everybody runs out to the garden away from the fire that they catch their clothes. And the, he did so many things that are unconventional to say the least, but there was, I think that there was more laughter than in than I can see in our courses today. Yeah, that's a, it sounds more like laughter, it. more joy, more real. Do what you want to do, not because it's it's in the program. Mm -hmm. How and much then, older was he than you, Mia? Uh, he, I think, twenty years. Something. Oh, no, I don't know. Wait. Anyway, older. Older. So uh, yeah. Um, and would you, so you're, you're describing someone with a voracious appetite to explore. And, yes, and also to, to have fun. And to have fun, to, and to have fun. And I think that's uh, definitely not something that was in my mind about Moshe. Um, that's why I wanted to be known for, and if we had games like at home, you know, like sometimes you play them, his was always something to excel with. For instance, how can you tear this? Where will it go? And when you throw it, everything was new, something you never tried before. And can you do it better? Mm -hmm. What so, makes it better? Right. And so a part of what I hear you, you, you describing is um, that it doesn't get old for you and it didn't get old for Moshe to observe the small details about how someone did what they did, and then as it unfolded, yes. to be excited about that. Yes. And we are such a, um, we are such now a culture of achievement, and everything has to be kind of fast and big and flashy. And now we're here going, um, well, I, I just got to watch a, a video with Olena Netafor where she's helping someone. And in the, in the middle of watching the video as she's helping him, I said, oh, there, finally his weight shifted off of his, his left sitting bone. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and it's like, you're waiting for it the whole, I'm like kind of, kind of like thinking, when is, when is he gonna discover that? Is he gonna discover that? Maybe he's gonna discover that. And, and then I, and I'm wondering also like, what's gonna be the impact on his discomfort, right? Is it gonna help it to go away? It looks like to me, if he discovers it, it his discomfort will, his, his discomfort will lower. I think that those kinds of like really small details and helping any of us to be excited about those is such a gift. No, that, that's the gift. I mean, that's why to do it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why do you do it? And when you say this story is interesting what you're telling me, because you, you were looking for him to discover something. Yeah, I was. 
I, 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 I had the thing the other day. What? Go ahead. I, ha I had a wonderful thing the other day when somebody I worked with, something changed and the class looked at it and I looked at it and we all said, oh, it's so amazing and this is what happened and so on. He came back the next time and I said, what was the most interesting thing for you from what, did you get anything out of it? He said, yes, you know, not when you showed me, but when I came home for the first time, all my life I've been haunted by fear of heights. And for the first time, I'm not afraid of heights. Well, I wouldn't have known. No, you'd never I, guess he, that, would you? Wow. He gave my, in, in my house, he found the freedom to open all the doors. And now you choose which one you, you, you're going through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's lovely. And that's what I want now to, to, to really live as a, as a heritage connected to what we're doing and to how we're feeling. And also, I mean, it's not so bad to laugh. It's not for what? So bad to laugh. It's not so bad to laugh. <laughs> Great. So, so um, I, I love this. I mean, I, I, I love this idea that you, the heritage you want to leave for us is this delight, absolute yes. delight in yes. discovery and change and not knowing where it's going to go. Yes, no, but, but catching it when it's coming from other sides and you're saying, wow, well, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. And then laughter. Yeah. That's, it's so necessary. And, it, and he used to say, even in America, when he was under pressure and many people, and it was heavy. In America, it was heavy. And when we were at home, it was light. Nobody had any opinions, just absorption. So Mia, we talked a little bit last time about Moshe coming to Japan, but I think that you might have some more things to add for us. So could you just give us a little idea that you went to Japan and at some point, I think you'd been there maybe a year or so when he came to visit? Three, three years. years, three years. Okay, three years when he came to visit. And, and what was that experience like? And what did, he, what did he find delightful for himself in that? He was a dream come true. I mean, that, uh, it was very difficult to say to him, listen, Moshe, we are going to go to Japan, the family, for a few years. Because if, I knew that if I don't go now, afterwards, the children will go to the army and all sorts of things, and we won't do it. Mm -hmm. And it was a dream of all of us to go there. And it's his fault. He told us about Japan. <laughs> but he was very, very angry, actually. But uh, after, as I said to him, I promise you, before we leave, you're coming. And he came. So that was for him a dream come true because we did wonderful things there. We belonged to an acting uh, family. You know, 23 generations of something like no theater. Do you know what it is? No, like a kabuki, but more traditional. Okay. So we joined that family and we acted on all the stages in Japan. And we took him with us and he met the you teacher. You acted? Yes. You were in the act, you, you were on the stage. Yes, we Wonderful. became part of the family. Of a, the whole family a, was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of oh, a I, style. I hope a picture of that. I hope so. I had, I had Leora, Leora and Leon, they both acted on stage. Oh, wonderful. The hard <laughs> Japanese singing. And uh, so he loved it and he, they gave him a great honor. I mean, they, they, they are very much in touch more with the essence of you than you think you, they are. Mm -hmm. So immediately he walked in the street and people moved away. I mean, they recognize, I don't know, teachers or something. Teaching, a teacher is a very important thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, he, he went to see these people. Then we took him to the Kodokan where we did Rudo. 
and we made the masters of Kodokan to come and give him honors and they gave him a badge that he wore afterwards all his life. He was delighted. And wherever we found something there, what he sometimes talks about a man called Noguchi, who had a certain school of healing and he was a great master, mm -hmm. a great master. I remember I told him, I also have a master in Israel and he's got also big groups. That's when I first met him. And he said, yes, how many people come to him? I said, it can be 40, it can be even 50. He said, ah, oh, you want to come and see what I do? I said, yes. So he said, why don't you come this weekend? I'm giving a class. I said, how many people? He said, there'll be between six and 8,000. So <laughs> that sort of master. But when Moshe came, he was ready, this man, and he gave him great honor. He display, he allowed Moshe to display his work. He put me as a model because the, Moshe couldn't speak Japanese. And we did this movement, you know, everybody now does it. Ah, the, the, yeah, right. What we call the dead bird, but you call it the Noguchi, don't you? Noguchi. Yeah. Yes. So, because that's what he did there. So they say that because it looked like a dead bird, but I think it's a live bird, actually. Mm -hmm. And Noguchi. So he did all this. And these I have in, the, in pictures, I'll, I'll send you his uh, demonstrations because he sent a message and people came from all over Japan to see Moshe demonstrate there. And Noguchi stands there at the side, just looking. The very modest. So he had a wonderful time. It was his life dream come true. And then I felt much better leaving him in the middle at that stage. We're sure. I mean, you had a, you really, it shows a lot of growth on both of your parts because you, you know, we all know that we can't stay attached to our teachers forever. We have to differentiate and go. And so you did that and you managed to ne negotiate that really difficult time together it shows a tremendous amount of maturity and still come back and have a relationship beyond that that's, yeah that's when rare. i came back is when we came to america yeah that's very rare very rare to be people can do that mm. yeah but I, all the things that i told you i've got photographs i can show you moshe used to be a chain smoker you know never stops and I've got pictures of him smoking in the garden, in my garden, or playing with the dogs or... And that's another thing. I had a dog. When she had puppies, he called Leo, right? And he called Leon and he said, look at the puppies, they do this. Look at the mother, she does. Everything that he could was a, an opportunity to show you something you've never known before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was a wonderful quality. And I think that it belongs to his method. And I think that in our methods, at our teaching, if we'll have a little bit of this lightness and openness and joy and laughter, it will be much better. <laughs> so in these courses that I'm giving, I'm all the time thinking of those days that were pre pre-public and glorious and famous, where it was just joy. And yeah, it's wonderful. I think it's a, I think it's a, I mean, I, I, I think I need to study with you a little bit more. That's for sure. I've only oh, had yeah. a tiny I'd little delighted. dose of you. I've only had a little tiny dose of you. So I need to study with you more. No, you want to enjoy it for the rest of your life. You don't, yeah. what's life all about? So I thought that for myself, I thought that a few, well, I've been saying, so I, I didn't, I, I came to become a practitioner at, in my late thirties. So it's just, I'm just now uh, a little over uh, 20 years, but I have thought for years that it would be something that I might do the rest of my life, that it's not really occurred to me that I would retire in any kind of traditional sense. Now I go a little bit back and forth about that at the moment, but I think that's more because of the other ways in which I express myself, like 
this extra work with the summit and et cetera. It's not so much about being a practitioner because it doesn't feel like something that has to be limited by my age. It doesn't feel to be a practitioner. It doesn't feel like something that has to be limited. By my age. <laughs> I mean, so many professions have to be your limited mother. by your age. I could be your mother. I could be your mother. Yeah. 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 You could be my mother. You absolutely could. And, 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 um, and I think it, it inspires me around to see that you still have enjoyment and pleasure in practicing and that you've found some other kind of nuances, Mia, that you are, are kind of bringing back in. And maybe they're the nuances that people might be more open to as they age, but actually they're the things that Marche started you out with. So it's lovely. Yeah, that's that's why when when Laura says that what we did at home before, I suddenly thought, but that's so important. It's so important, and this it didn't teach like because I don't think he thought about it as teachable. It, he just lived it, mm -hmm. but it's definitely the thing that holds together all the foundation. And do you think, uh, do you think he ever started really thinking it about it as a profession in, in the time that you knew him? Was it after San Francisco? I've heard that he, he realized people expected to do it as a profession. I mean, does, is that what changed it when people started to think about it as a profession? I think so. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, because for a long time, he, he didn't teach it as a profession. He, 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 yeah, we didn't, we never had really a program written down. Mm -hmm. Now we have, Leora is really doing a fantastic job with it. So she's putting it in a sequence and in an order and in a way that it can become a profession. But it has the other things also that I don't think we put anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do put it while teaching, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Mia, it sounds like as you were describing your early time that, and then we were just talking about it as a profession, it's like uh, in those early days, you didn't think of it as learning something specific like that would become a method. It was more like doing life. Yeah, no, you know what? Actually, when he said, come and work for me, because uh, they were thinking of putting this place with Ben Gurion and that I'll be there. I said, I, and when it didn't work, he said, so now uh, we won't work together or something like this. I said, anyway, I, I, I don't want to work. I've got children and I don't want to work. And he said, okay, don't work but come and look at what I'm doing. And I thought, what's that to look? I know Alexander, whatever I did at the time, and uh, I don't have to look at what you are doing, but he said, just come and look. And my story that I'll never forget is, I said, okay, but in the condition that I don't work. He said, okay, come and see what to do. How I walked in, and it was such a aha for me when he approached, his approach to that woman who was still remembered the new. At that moment, I said, Moshe, you know what? I really don't want to work, but I'm going to come and ask your permission to sit here and watch. And that's how it happened. So I watched for about, I don't know, maybe a year. And one day I thought, when did I start working? He was such a great <laughs> person. That's lovely. And then he has nice so, working. Yeah, so you had all this time with him in the, around the house and in the family, and then you start watching him work, and you realize it's just gradually you're you're yes. you're you're getting more and more curious, and you're building skill, and you're yeah. you're starting and to it, actually do the work. Yes, it was wonderful to see. Somebody gets up, he's looking, half of his body is here, the other half is there or something. Well, Mia, what is it like for you to work with your daughter? Wonderful. 
listen, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege mm -hmm. in a way. And now that's not so much working, but it's really already a long time. I, I'm learning from her a lot. Yeah. And actually, yeah, she, she knows more than I do in many ways. Mm. So we go from this early exploring as, as well, for, if you're doing the method for yourself uh, only, which is certainly more than enough of reason to do it, uh, you have this potential to engage in the work as a lifelong explorer for yourself. If you begin to study as a practitioner, then you start uh, where you start and we make mistakes like you and I have made and yet you keep growing and get better and better. And then you're talking about really a collaboration then between you and, and Leora, your daughter, that um, where you can learn from each other. And I think collaboration is really important. Have, and really that's what you and Moshe were doing was collaborating. Yeah, yeah. it's very important. Mm -hmm. Well, when I did it with Moshe, it wasn't on an equal thing at all. Huh? It was much more learning than, than contributing. But no, I think he actually wrote to me a few things where he said that my watching guided him to give better lessons, which you, you do, you need feedback. Yeah, and even though, even though he was, for you, the, the, the teacher, the master, uh, the student makes a big difference. In, yeah. It, you know, it, it, yeah. you and I both know that. I mean, a classroom that's that where the people are not really wanting to be there, not really. Uh, it, it's a it's not the same experience. I've had to teach, for example, in corporate environments where people didn't choose to come; they were forced oh. to come. And I'll tell you, that's a really different environment to to, to break into than one it's in which people are. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, how did you go? How did I do it? Yeah. How did it go? How did it go? Sometimes it went extremely well and other times it did not, you know? And I mean, sometimes the relationships between the people and their bosses were so strained that, that it was very difficult to get past that because it was just a requirement. But for people who were able to get past it, I still have relationships with some of those people 20 years later, when I first started out, that they yeah. still follow the work. Yeah. That makes it worthwhile. It does make it worthwhile. It does make it worthwhile, for sure. And it's, a, as you and I know, and people watching, it's a beautiful work. They've, they're seeing this interview, then they've probably been participating in the summit. It's a beautiful, beautiful work. And, uh, and maybe it is, in fact, just the process of being human, that, that what we explore, it's just... I, I sometimes think the reason why we have so much difficulty describing the work is only because it's so simple in many ways. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. I know that's why, that's why people who know little make it complicated. Yeah. And those who know it well, they make it simple. Mm. Mm. Well, Mia, it's been a pleasure exploring with you. I really Thank appreciate it. Yeah, you, you're good, you know. It's nice answering you and it's nice talking to you. Yeah. And yeah, that's why I wanted it. Great. I'm glad. I'm glad. Very glad. If, okay. If you, well, I will send you pictures. Yes. We, we will share them with people. So I know people will want to see them. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody.